Real quick, this is an update of a tip that posted in 2017, and while some small parts have been added toward the end, the majority is reused. Anyway, this tip is all about how you can turn meshes into solids inside Fusion 360. So let's start by making sure the mesh preview is turned on. This is done from your preferences. Next, let's talk about how to get into the mesh workspace. If you're capturing history, you'll find the ability to create a mesh near the bottom of the Create dropdown. And alternatively, if you prefer to not capture history, as I'm switching to here and indicated by the absence of the timeline, you'll find Mesh as its own workspace. But no matter which way you get there, you can be sure it'll offer the same functionality. At this point, I want to insert an example file for us to work from. To bring in your STLs or OBJs, select Insert Mesh from under the Create dropdown, then locate the file. As you go to insert it, we can set the scale, use automated tools to center the model, move it to ground, or you can manually transform it as well. With it placed, let's inspect the mesh a little. As I zoom in, the uber high quality of this mesh becomes apparent, and that is oftentimes the case. Feel free to check the number of facets by accessing the properties in the browser, and you can see this is almost at a million. And even though Fusion isn't struggling with it now, I know there can be some benefit in reducing the mesh. This is one of many modification methods provided within the mesh workspace. Using the Reduce tool, I can very aggressively cut back on facets without losing a high degree of resolution. Thanks to the Adaptive method, I can cut 95% without noticeable difference. So, what most people want to do when they get these into Fusion is modify them or turn them into editable solids. So let's explore a couple ways we can do this. First up is using sculpting tools. In this case, I'll drop a sculpted plane and increase the number of faces. Then I'll use a special tool found under Modify called Pole. What Pole will do is move selected vertices to the closest body, even mesh bodies. I'll do a box select to capture all the vertices, and that's it. As I rotate around, you can see how well this simple procedure enabled me to not only recreate this shape, but it's improved it now with a curvature continuous T-spline body. Next up, and somewhat related is a method that uses the patch workspace. In this case, I want to copy the mesh shape using a sketch tool called Create Mesh Selection. This will take a cross section of the mesh that I'll use later. You can very easily move the location of this to capture particular areas of your model. I'll do this a couple more times because the more I have, the better the results will be. In some cases, like the back piece, it makes sense to rotate the mesh section. Now I want to further smooth these by using another tool found under the same submenu. Fit Curve to Mesh Selection will enable me to create sketch entities about those mesh sections. Just select the command, then the mesh section, and you'll be taken to a sketch environment. Now I can use various lines, arcs, splines, and other shapes to recreate the geometry. As I do this, I'll drop a number of points, because again, the more I add, the better my results will be. Because I want to turn this into a loft later, I'll try to ensure that for each mesh section I do this for, I have a similar number of points. We'll skip ahead, and I'm ready to turn this into a loft. I'll access the command, then select Chain Selection, as that'll save me from having to select every single sketch entity. Just three more clicks, and I have another smooth representation of that mesh data. Further to that, I can adjust tangency weights, takeoff angles, and so on. From there, I can use the thicken command found under create to turn this into a solid. This same command could have been used to thicken T-spine body, or other patch methods can be used here as well. The next method will require I convert an existing mesh into an OBJ with quads. A couple methods were discussed in an earlier tip that I've linked in the card you can access in the corner of this video by hitting the little I. Anyway, once you have an OBJ with quads, you can bring it back into Fusion 360. Now, because it's made with quads, I can use the Convert tool within T-Splines to turn this mesh into a T-Splines body. This can be modified with the Modify tools as you would with any sculpted body, but the number of faces can make it a tad difficult. The scan came across almost perfect, but there was one opening. On the back face here, I'll use the Fill hole to patch it up, and from there I can finish the form, and now it's a solid. A quick section analysis will verify this. And finally, there's a super easy option to simply convert meshes to B-reps, with some caveats. Let's check it out with this generatively created model. First off, I'll expand the Bodies folder and right-click the mesh with the hopes of seeing the simple option, which, as it turns out, will not be here. Why? Because I'm capturing the design history at the moment. So let's flip the switch on that and jump right back into the same, but different menu. Now I'll find that option I'm looking for, Mesh to B-rep. 
But another issue you might experience when trying to use this is that it will not work for highly complex meshes like what I have here. Easy to fix though, right? Just jump into the mesh workspace and use the reduce option to get rid of some of the complexity. In this case, I want to shoot for a specific face count target of about 20k, but the threshold for this method is actually almost double that. Anyway, we'll reduce and should be good to go. But when I right mouse click on the mesh body in the browser, that option is missing again. Turns out it isn't available in the mesh workspace, so we'll go back to modeling and finally hit it again. Now I get a warning suggesting it may be too many facets, but it'll still let me do the B rep conversion. Just click OK, sit tight for a second, and your solid body is here. Tons of faces and edges as expected, but if you turn on shaded view, it looks great. So just remember three things if you want to use this method history free mode, modeling workspace, and less than 50,000 facets. I did also want to note that if you don't have a watertight mesh, as I forced here with a quick face delete, that when you go to do this, your resultant B rep will be a surface model. From there, you can patch or alternatively, if you know where the holes are, fix it in the mesh workspace too. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.